Now, as with any discussion linked to going green, sustainability or adapting to climate change, we are reminded of the South African government's commitment to carbon reduction targets of 34% from 2010 levels by 2020. Eric Noir, the director for WS Green by Design, joins us in studio to share his thoughts on future trends in sustainable buildings. Eric, thank you so much for making thank the you. time to join us. 34% by 2020, is this a reasonable target? It's an incredible target. It's a fantastic achievement by our government mm -hmm. to have committed to that. Uh, we're now left on the ground to make it happen, and it's going to be a, a difficult one to, to achieve, I believe. In the space that we have seven years uh, to get to, the, to that target, what are the basic fundamentals that ha are going to have to be addressed uh, for us to meet that target? I don't believe that we'll manage to change our energy mix substantially and move away from a, from a carbon intensive energy mm. mix as we have at the moment. So that option uh, is probably not available to us. We will make some inroads into renewables, but that's not going to make 34% of course. Um, the morphologies of our city is not going to change materially again within that time frame. It is progressing and our cities are becoming more normal, moving away from the, from the apartheid planning. Uh, but again, that's not going to resolve the, the intensity of our, our energy consumption in, in, in movement, in mobility. So it's a fantastic target, but one that we're not very likely to, to meet in the next seven years. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that those up those big options are highly unlikely to to materialize so it will put a renewed mm. pressure on a built environment to to achieve those targets and i think that's a fantastic opportunity we certainly can make massive progress in the built environment mm -hmm. both the existing building stock as well as some some new buildings um, and it's, 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 it's likely. So let's also look at uh, the concept of green cities. I mean, we have a, a number of reports coming out and saying the future green cities and future mega cities are in Africa. How, how big or how important are green buildings as a component of moving towards green cities? Yeah, I think that a, a collection of green buildings is not going to make a green city. Really, the fundamentals of the cities, about densities, about the infrastructures, about the comp city, the mixed use, uh, the complexities about the ability to, to not to live in one place and travel 20 kilometers or, mm. or two hours of commute to get to work and back and having both both sides being empty either at night or during the day. And, and the mixed city uh, will really make some, some serious um, achievement in terms of energy consumption. And of course green cities and green buildings don't just happen overnight. In terms of time frames, what are you, wh how do you move towards being a green city? How long does that process take? Cities typically take a huge amount of time to shape, to assemble, to mature, uh, to, to regenerate. They're going through cyclical movements of decaying and rejuvenation and so on. So that's a long term endeavor for sure. Let's also look at uh, the, uh, I want you to connect the dots for me between productivity, spatial planning and green buildings because oftentimes uh, when we speak about green buildings there's always this argument that this promotes productivity through spatial planning. Where's this relationship and how is it connected? It's quite interesting that the, the the latest trends in space planning and, and in ways of occupying spaces, and we've seen that within our own offices, we just went through uh, a, a, a refurbishment. And we find that by moving away from cellular office and into open plan office, and it's not just about taking partitions away from people, it's about replacing the functions of those partitions with uh, a broad range of boardroom from or meeting room from a privacy booth just to take a private or uh, confidential phone call to, to, to a conference facility. Um, we find that we can use better the space. We can probably reclaim about 30% of our spaces, which would be otherwise lost in, in corridors and walkways and, and spaces that we're paying rent for but not using appropriately. It fosters a much greater collaboration mm. amongst people, you know who your neighbors are, uh, you, 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 you operate in a, in a much more open way. So we find that the quality of the work coming out of the floor is much better. Uh, people are happier. And the interesting part is that it talks to sustainability in the sense that now air movement, air change effectiveness, daylight penetration, all those things become much better. 
I can I can almost term. see all the executives and really senior people in their corporate offices shaking their head at the prospect of possibly losing their offices that differentiate them from the rest of the more junior people. We we have had a very interesting time and as often with sustainability is about market transformation or transformation, transformation towards uh, um, addressing the sustainability imperative. And that's done typically by overcoming resistance to change. Right. And resistance to change, we had. We had to make the case, we had to test some area and show how much better it works. And, and we managed to convince really uh, uh, an incredible amount of people, right. Um, right across the hierarchy, in fact. To let go of their offices and come into open plan. But let's maybe look at the design aspects uh, when we look at green buildings. Are we finding that designers are also uh, increasingly latching on to the ideas of bringing designs that are green by their very nature? Designers are absolutely hungry for doing the right things. They might not always be equipped to do so, and I think that our role as, as sustainability professionals is to, is to quantify, in a sense, the, the impact of the design decisions almost in real time. So mm. we can design something and we can test it against hard facts and say, that is improving such and such um, indicators or criteria, or is it decaying? And, and we can change as we go, as opposed to go through an entire design process and then realize, oops, it's not quite what we wanted. So we can unpack the design and we can support the professionals and designers really with our, our, our sustainability consulting and our engineering uh, abilities. Support the designers to do the right thing as we go, as they go along. Very quickly, we, we can have this conversation in South Africa where infrastructure is far more advanced than in many African countries. If we look at the broader continent, uh, is this a feasible conversation to be having, to be thinking and talking about green buildings and green cities? Absolutely. The first thing you have to realize is that any multinational listed on any big um, financial platform will have to comply to certain sets of regulations. Somebody, um, a corporation cannot do uh, any different in Accra than they would in London, for instance. So those requirements are coming, and that's one of the main drive. Um, but the other more important thing is that I truly believe that out of Africa, we have the, the, the the ills of sustainability are completely exacerbated. As we find that uh, we will have to find very original ways of reconcil reconciling the balance between social equity, economic prosperity, and environmental stewardship. And I'm absolutely convinced that within 5, 10, 15 years from now, the rest of the world will look at Africa for very original solutions.